biosynthesis flexes. So, uh, can I use? Oh, okay. okay, so it's a model on uh, cell growth. So I'm uh, studying cell growth, and for that I'm starting from the central dogma of uh, biology. So uh, transcription and translation from DNA to mRNA to protein production. Uh, yes. Uh, is it better like this? No. Yeah. Is, it, is it better? Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah. So I'm studying the uh, uh, transcription and translation uh, to uh, fluxes to study uh, the production of proteins, and so I'm starting from um, uh, the. I want to get those uh, fluxes to understand cell growth. So. The first thing, as I'm not really looking at uh, enzyme uh, and metabolic pathways, so I'm looking at the distribution of the RNA polymerase over the different chains of interest. So for now, it's a really very simple model. Uh, we just got uh, three, three proteins of, uh, of three sectors of interest, the ribosomes, the RNA polymerase, and all the other proteins. So R is for ribosomes, N is for RNA polymerase, and O for others. Uh, so from that distribution of RNA polymerase over the over the genes, I can get to my mRNA pool, and from that mRNA pool with the ribosomes and their different initiation rates to uh, to the mRNAs, I can get to my distribution of ribosomes on the mRNAs on the different sectors of mRNAs, and that then gives me my uh, prediction of proteins for the and my distribution of the protein. So again, uh, very simple uh, sectors. So they don't need to be the same sectors, but uh, here for simplicity, they, they are. Um, so this gives me my repartition of the proteins, and this will then determine, the, uh, along with the proteins, the number of proteins, my flux of, of transcription and translation. And so I want to, to go from there to cell growth. And I want to do it through a mechanistic approach. So I'm looking at those fluxes, but like, um, uh, with a traffic model, so I'm looking at uh, how fast the ribosomes and the RNA polymerase go over the DNA and the mRNA, and to get to that protein production. So I will first talk about the so that transcription and translation model, and then see a few applications that we can use with uh, with this model. So first off the traffic model that we use as uh, the base, the totally asymmetric simple excision process. Uh, so it's a traffic model and which uh, where particles are going over a lattice with uh, three important parameters, the alpha, k, and beta, respectively the initiation uh, rate, the elongation rate, and the termination rate. And from those three parameters, we can get to every property that we're interested on in the uh, in the model, so the density over the, the lattice and the flux that you get for for those uh, for those rates, and so uh, so in the simplest uh, case we have uh, this uh, this flux that depends on the density rho, and uh, you get to a saturation if the density gets too high. So uh, just a fair warning before this is and um, also the, all the equation you will see. Uh, for the case where the uh, particle over the lattice is of size one, and that is rarely the case, actually, that is not the case in the cell, as the ribosomes, it's more this size. So we can still solve uh, analytically all the, uh, all the equations, but for simplicity, I just show the case where the size is equal to one. So we've got uh, the model for, we've got the, the traffic model, and so we want to uh, apply it to translation, for example. So here, translation, we just have uh, every lattice, every mRNA is a lattice, and the ribosomes go over it. And the initiation rate depends on the uh, free ribosome pool. So it's every inactive in our, uh, ribosomes, and um, the initiation rate then depends on the free ribosome uh, concentration. So as the new number of uh, ribosomes increase, you have a higher ribosome pool, there's a higher initiation rate, and thus your uh, amount of uh, ribosomes on the mRNA will increase. So if you see, um, can you see? Uh, well, 
know that in the top left you have the how the density will change with the with the amount of ribosomes. So if you increase your ribosomes, your density increases as long as you're in that in a certain low density phase until until you get to saturation. And as you get to saturation, you change phase, you get to a maximal current phase. So the density is uh, optimal for the um, for the current, and no matter how many ribosomes you add in there, you will still keep the same density and so the same flux over the mRNAs. So we call that uh, either the maximal current or the saturation phase, and it is only limited by the elongation rate. Um, so we got uh, we get actually a third phase, but where the termination rate is uh, limiting, but we don't really see that uh, in practice, so I don't really uh, show it here. Um, so in, pr uh, in practice, we have uh, just two phases, the low density and the saturation phase, one where the initiation rate is limiting, one the elongation rate. And so we can, uh, the flux will then depend on the amount of ribosomes you have on your mRNAs, that's your bound ribosomes, and that will depend on the so initiation rate. So that's alpha zero times the concentration of free ribosomes times the elongation rate. And that's for one site. So you multiply that by the number of sites you have or codons you have in your, in your mRNAs. So the average length of the mRNA times the total mRNA. And which this number then saturates uh, in the saturation phase at a half of all those sites. So we get the, um, the model for the translation process, and we do the exact same for the transcription process. The lattices are DNA, the particles are RNA polymerase, but nothing changes. So we have the whole, uh, the whole model, and we can uh, just uh, find the fluxes depending on your amount of uh, ribosomes and the parameters of the initiation rate, elongation rate, uh, of, uh, of DNA and mRNA. And so you get a very simple um, gene expression model where you will be able to see the evolution of mRNA uh, depending on your gene copy number, the transcription flux, and the degradation. And you will also see this, the production of proteins depending on the mRNA and the translation, uh, translation flux. So this is, uh, so this is the model, and we then want to see how that relates to, to growth. And so, as you saw, there are two phases for each, um, uh, each flex, so transcription and translation. So if you look at the growth, you will have also four phases for each possible um, phase in which the fluxes are. One where the, everything is in low density, and as either ribosomes or RNA polymerase will be um, uh, abandoned, so you will get to a saturation phase for either transcription or translation, or for both of them, where the, yeah, the growth rate will be maximal, as we will see. So yeah, now we want to see what happens uh, when you look at the growth. Um, in the first really easy hypothesis, you're just looking at uh, bulk growth. So uh, if you look at uh, uh, the mean value of the cell, so um, you can make uh, two hypotheses. Uh, Protein concentration is uh, constant for a given growth rate. So in a given condition, uh, so P is constant, and the gene copy number concentration is constant too. Not uh, for every growth rate, but for just for a given growth rate. That means your um, flux of uh, transcription and translation will also be constant over time for that given growth condition. And so for each condition, we can find a unique uh, um, value of the RNA polymerase concentration and the ribosome concentration. So first, um, we can see a bit more about the transcription flux, uh, how that will uh, in, uh, relate to how the flux will change for different values of the concentration of the genes and RNA polymerase. So you see that uh, it will uh, saturate. Uh, so this is the flux uh, normalized by the maximum transcri transcription flux. So it will saturate for a certain value and otherwise be in that, that l low density phase. So um, as long as you are above that black bar, you are in low density phase. And as soon as you go below it, that's the saturation phase. 
and the same for the uh, translation process, so also low density uh, saturation. And when we apply this to, uh, to find the prediction of proteins, you get the phase diagram of the growth rates um, for different values of the RNA polymerase and ribosome concentration. And so you either have both of the processes in low density or again ribosome or RNA polymerase uh, to be abundant, they will lead to a saturation. And you have, uh, again, this uh, uh, part where both ribosome, where both translation and transcription are saturated, and that's where we expect our maximum growth rate. And indeed, if you look at the normalized growth rate, so the growth is every growth rate divided by the growth rate you have in the saturation part, you see that it's indeed saturated where we expected it to be, so in the top right and then it, uh, it decreases uh, for, the, um, for the ribosome concentration and the NAP concentration when you are in the low density phase. So this gives us a value of the growth rate for every possible condition, but uh, that's not every possible, not every con condition is possible in the, in the cell, so we're looking at uh, what we uh, expect uh, to find, and as it happens, the ribosome density of mRNA is supposed to be constant over the mRNA, um, uh, over the different conditions. So those are lines where the um, density of ribosomes is constant. So you will have a relation between the RNA polymerase and the ribosome for different uh, growth rates for a given density of ribosomes. And uh, so we expect our actual values in the cell to be following one of those lines. Now, a slight problem you might have noticed in this uh, diagram is the values of the ribosome concentration and the RNA polymerase concentration, which are way too high for biological values. So if you look more at what we expect um, uh, for values to be found, uh, so for E. coli in the uh, uh, in normal growth rates. So we'll find uh, something more like this, uh, with growth rate between, uh, yeah, so zero and three, because it's still, uh, you still have a, a bit saturating part on the top right. And um, values of the density of uh, ribosomes that are closer to what you will expect, and uh, what we actually, what is actually measured for the density of ribosomes is uh, this line. So that's our prediction for the ribosome concentration an RNA polymerase concentration for a given growth rate. So we want to check that uh, with data, so we use the, it's the Balakrishnan data from uh, 2022. Uh, uh, and you see, we see that it's a very good prediction, so it's not a fit, it's just uh, so starting from the density of uh, ribosomes of RNA, what you get for the ribosome concentration, RNAP concentration for a given growth rate. So for those of you who know the Balakrishnan paper, know that the RNA polymerase is actually the available RNA polymerase in the, in the paper, um, which is set by enzymes. So, but uh, as we ignore the metabolic pathway, the available RNA polymerase, that's just our total RNA polymerase, um, and so, uh, well, it's, uh, it, is the, it is the same, but to be certain of that, we can also look at the mRNA synthesis flux, so the actual effect of the RNA polymerase for the, yes. So, for this prediction, you're looking at the low density phase uh, for both transcription and translation. Um, here, as it happens, they're both in low density phase, okay. but it's not, yeah. uh, it's not necessary. I mean, it's... No, 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 but it happens to be there. Just yes. That was yes. the question. They're yes. in low density. Um, yes, so that's uh, the, the prediction. And so if you look at the mRNA synthesis flux, it also um, if it, uh, predicts the, the data very well. So is the prediction based on assuming a constant linear density of ribosomes? Of mRNA, yes. Okay, thanks. So yeah, that is the, the starting, uh, yes. Otherwise you have 
way too many possible um, values of RNA polymerase concentration and ribosome concentration for the same growth rate. So, um, well, of course, you could get to this uh, repartition mm, to different ways, just uh, fitness uh, evaluation or something like this. But here it's just... Uh, 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 just a question. And how, how far are you from, um, from the saturation phase? So here it is um, actually quite far, but we still have uh, um, uh, traffic. So if you... Um, it's low density, but uh, there's still traffic because you still have interaction because between the ribosomes and RNA polymase. So, uh, I mean, I don't show it here, but it's, uh, you will have a, a difference uh, in the prediction if you remove the traffic uh, from, the, from the model. Yes, so if you look back at you, the... If you look at the, at yeah, the current this. density relationship, you're not in the linear regime. Yes, so um, yes, you are in the, so this regime, where, so in the red part uh, over there. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the, a bit the, the results for the, this model on the prediction on uh, cell economy. And so we wanted to go uh, a bit further, see uh, what we can do with this model in uh, different applications. So we looked at uh, single cell dynamics. And uh, the first thing with single cells is that the gene concentration to be uh, assumption that the gene concentration is constant is no longer true in uh, over small times. So if you look at, uh, so before DNA replication or before division, the cell is growing, but you don't have more uh, genes. So um, the gene number is constant. And well, while this is uh, a work in progress, so uh, be careful about uh, that, but we, we can make a, a prediction of what will happen um, because of uh, um, not saturation, but because of those uh, traffic, uh, uh, the impact it will have on the growth. So if you look at the, so the growth during a gene uh, number constant, so during this, uh, this, uh, this phase, you will have that the ratio between the RNA polymerase and the number of genes will change because the protein number increase, but not the gene number, so uh, you have more an apron image for the same amount of genes, and at some point, you will get more traffic until saturation. If you get saturation for the RNA polymerase, you will then also have a limited amount of mRNA uh, production, and if you have limited amount of RNA, mRNA production, you can also have saturation for the ribosomes, and that leads to uh, saturated production of proteins. So over a long time, you will see that the production of uh, proteins will saturate, um, and so you have uh, two, two parts in uh, this plot, one where the production is still uh, kind of autocatalytic, so the, you produce more proteins, but the effect of having more proteins increases the, the production of proteins, so it is still a, a process that is kind of uh, exponential. But once it is saturated, you, so this uh, saturated phase, you will expect, uh, well, the, the production to not never change with the amount of, uh, of proteins, and that will lead to linear growth. So, um, so that's the protein number over time, over a long time, and when the production of proteins is limited, that's, uh, you get a linear regime. Um, and when the, you are still the autocatalytic, autocatalytic uh, process, you will have a pseudo-exponential growth, um, pseudo because it's still the transition between an exponential growth where gene concentration is constant to that linear growth. Um, in effect, that means if you look at the growth rate of your protein uh, at, a given at a given time, so just the normalized uh, production of proteins, it will decrease slowly over time. And once you're in a linear growth, it will just uh, exponentially decrease to zero in a very long time where you don't have exponential growth anymore. Um, the, but in effect, this time is very long. So for a given, uh, given growth rate, the actual time your cell will be in that phase of uh, constant gene numbers will be relatively short. So if we normalize the time 
uh, by the time it needs to, to divide, you will see that the amount of, uh, of uh, genes uh, of the decrease in growth rates is actually quite small. So there's two things we can see here. One is first, uh, while it is a small decrease, the instant growth rate is still decreasing. That means you're not uh, exactly in the exponential growth rate during the uh, gene constant uh, number uh, part. But the actual decrease is really small, so uh, less than 6% uh, even for very small growth rates. So the actual uh, approximation of uh, that the gene is concentrating this constant is actually, it seems to be quite reasonable. Now, we want to um, further use this to um, then make prediction on uh, how long it takes to, to get to the um, linear phase. I mean, we already have that, but this is still a, a toy model. And then to make experiment to see if we can see that uh, that transition by uh, inhibiting uh, DNA replication. But uh, in conclusion, it's still, uh, we still have a model that can predict cell economy in uh, different conditions. And um, while the, the single cell dynamics for now don't really have an impact on single, um, on uh, normal growth conditions, we expect to see more effects on uh, during uh, different stresses. So when we add uh, the antibiotics, especially with effects on uh, transcription, and we hope to see, to make experiments uh, with uh, DNA replication. So um, that's, uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer. Thanks a lot. We have uh, time for questions. Okay, since we had already question, let's thank the speaker again.